Newton, thank you for the increased gas prices. It's not like this beast doesn't guzzle enough in the first place, but I'm gonna tell you right now, my friend, that is just the beginning of our financial worries. In fact, there are five ways that the conflict between Russia and Ukraine is gonna affect your finances. Let me show you. One, one. Turning dreams into reality. Yeah, it's one all one shot. Now the future is yours. Go. Man, I'll tell you what. Putin has been testing the waters for the last 30 years. He made his move, and today we're going to talk about how this is going to affect your United States economy because of the crisis that's happening in Ukraine right now. You know, for the record. I feel horrible about what's happening in Ukraine right now because I don't feel like any person's freedom on this planet should ever be imposed upon, not by another country, but by another man. I think what Putin's doing is entirely wrong, and so my heart doesn't just go out to Ukraine, but Russian citizens that disagree with this move. You know, my father's a German immigrant. When he came to America, it was because he was looking for freedom from dictatorship. He wanted freedom in his world. And so I think it's one of my top core values. It's what I stand for. I don't want anyone imposing themselves on me. And so Ukraine, I hope they stop doing it to you too, my friend. So what's really happening? Listen, if you're behind on the times, look, it just went down a few days ago. This is right out of Vogue. Russian shelling and airstrikes began attacking major Ukrainian cities early Thursday morning on February 24th. Putin has issued a blanket warning to countries, specifically the US and its allies, about the consequences of interfering, which he described as greater than any you have faced in history. In other words, Putin is basically saying, if you get involved, period, this could be all out war. I mean, that's a little bit what I'm reading between the lines. So obviously we've got one of the largest armies in the world that is beating up on this small country. You've got communism mixed with capitalism over here, and you've got Ukraine that is fighting for freedom, democracy, and a better way of living. And my question is, who's gonna show up and help these guys? Listen, we might all live and hail from different countries, but no mistaking that what happens in one country affects another country. We're all interconnected. It's a symbiotic relationship, which means that what's happening on that side of the world is financially affecting us. In fact, it's affecting us five different major ways. The first of which is what we've seen happen so far in the stock market. The stock market plunged on February 24th with the Dow dropping 830 points. CBS News reported that by the afternoon, the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P indexes had all dropped by 2% from a day earlier, according to Forbes. If they're not worried about Russia-Ukraine tensions, they're worried about inflation and the Fed or Russia or oil or tech. According to Callie Cox, a U.S. investment analyst, bottom line is we're feeling it in the stock market because this isn't a U.S. thing. This is a global Thing. Think about all the imports and exports, for example, that come out of Russia and how that affects us. We're going to take a deeper look at that because this is just the beginning of the financial turmoil that we might all face if these tensions don't get resolved. Well, if they felt it with the stock market, you know they felt it in crypto land. Why? Because it's incredibly sensitive. In fact, check this out from CNBC. It says that Bitcoin fell 8% on February 24th. So Bitcoin had a really strong reaction, four times the reaction to the stock market, and yet it was back up 9% the following Monday on the 28th after the Treasury Department imposed new sanctions against Russia's central bank. Now, if you're not familiar with sanctions, this is basically other countries, other people doing trade that are saying, we're not gonna deal with you anymore if you don't stop what you're doing. And so what those sanctions do is that starts at least alleviating some of that uncertainty and fear that people are facing that, hey, what are we doing about this? Well, for starters, let's make it difficult, in fact, even stop doing business with them whatsoever. War increases fear, doubt, and uncertainty, which adds volatility to any market. So far, crypto has tended to follow the stock market, but this may shift if investors use it to hedge against inflation. Because if you're not aware, the US dollar right now with inflation is already tanking in value. It's up by 7%. It's still on the rise. Crypto, on the other hand, you can't just create more of it when you need more of it. The government doesn't exactly understand that. That's what they do with this stuff. But in crypto land, when they launch crypto, it's already pre-designated up front how much of it there's going to be, which means it might be a really volatile market because of uh, the way that the market moves, but the truth is it only becomes more scarce, driving its value up more and more and more. 
I think in the end that this fiasco that we're experiencing overseas may end up being even better for crypto as people start looking at crypto as a safer place long term to hold their money than in cash. Everything liquidated, cash. And speaking of inflation, what Russia is doing to Ukraine, could it actually intensify and make inflation worse? Look at this. Russia produces 10% of global oil and supplies 40% of Europe's gas. It's the world's largest grains and fertilizer exporter, top palladium and nickel producer, and fifth largest wood exporter. Long-term sanctions against Russia could drastically increase the price of gas, food, wood, cars, electric chips, and batteries, causing inflation to skyrocket. Again, it goes back to this principle that if you don't agree with what Russia is doing, then you don't want to be seen doing business with them. So all the major goods that we benefit from that come out of Russia, they get to impose increased prices. How come they wouldn't retaliate that way? Which means that our dollar, which already is stretched thin by 7% this year alone, probably next year and next year and getting worse. In fact, if you do the math on this, what 7% and rising over five years is going to do? it's probably going to erode the value of your dollar, potentially, in half. That doesn't get better when all of a sudden we're taxed at a much higher rate on these other goods that we're consuming from Russia. By the way, if you're really worried about inflation, and I think you should be, all the more reason for you to be a subscriber here on my channel because there's a lot of information that I provide that will help you hedge against inflation by simply moving your money from these risky places to far safer places. Instead of losing half the value, you could literally 5x your money over the next five years. In fact, hang tight for the end of the video. I'm actually going to share with you a couple of thoughts and ideas that can help you position yourself for greater safety by reviewing your finances and making better choices. Strangely enough, let's actually talk about what's happening in the world of gold and other precious metals. Would you guess during tensions like this in the world that the price of gold is going down or up? Well, I'll tell you what, when people get really worried about the value of their dollar, they prefer to hold gold. This is how money was originally held before we went on a fiat system in 1930s. Gold has risen by about 6.5% in February, having soared to an 18-month all-time high of nearly $2,000 on the 23rd. When geopolitical tensions get really high, gold is still the main safe haven asset, often outperforming cryptocurrencies or other assets like treasuries. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not flocking to stock up on a lot of gold and silver right now, but I can see why people do it. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a financial channel, and I'm here to help you awaken your financial genius. And the truth is, is that when you take a look at how much gold and other precious metals increase year over year over year, it's not an exciting investment. This is a little bit more of a doomsday prepper's dream of how they want to hold their assets when they believe that the dollar is going to fail. I have the best stocked survival shelter in northeastern Pennsylvania. But everything has a shelf life, so I must eat and then replace everything that's about to expire. But it's not really practical by way of investment. It's a place where you put money to keep it safe. Other people, however, they're putting their money in the stock market and cryptocurrencies. And between the two, I think cryptocurrency has a much more favorable long-term ROI than the stock market, which seems to perform at a 30-year average just shy of 10%. And if you've ever run calculations on your financial future of having a pile of money only earning 10%, the truth is it does not compound very meaningfully over the course of a 40-year working life, which means you have to get exposed to other types of assets that have higher ROI. I'm not going to find that gold. Okay then, Chris, I mean, obviously you're the real estate guy, so are you going to tell me next how real estate is going to be affected by all this? Why, yes, in fact, I am. Awesome. Yes. Real estate is the largest commodity that the average American will ever hold. And if you're curious what the threat of another world war or war on the other side of the world might do to the value of real estate, check this out. Many are worried about large-scale inflation due to the war. If this occurs, real estate is an excellent hedge. With fixed-rate mortgages, payments stay the same, but an investor can charge more for rent as housing prices go up to meet inflation. Now, imagine for a moment that we didn't have this tension between Russia and Ukraine. Um, right now, we have a different kind of problem with real estate. We don't have a lot of it. In fact, at a historic level, we've never had so little for the demand that exists. We have this incredible shortage of supply of real estate, and if builders build at maximum pace for the next 10 years, we might be able to dig ourselves out of this pit. You've seen real estate skyrocket over the last two years. You're going to see it continue year over year over year, likely continue to go up in value, and that's because we have already this current issue. Now, if you stack inflation on top of it, real estate's going to become even more popular. 
what right now is happening with war overseas is only yet again saying, wow, real estate is definitely the place where I need to put my money. And yet that's problematic for a lot of people because you're thinking, well, I own a house. Like, what do I do with another property? Well, listen, you might be a 401 er you might be an ira or you might be a house payer offer, you might be an S&P 500 kind of person, but when you start realizing that 90% of millionaires do it in the game of real estate, it's because they buy real estate not to live in, but to let out to other people. And that sounds like a whole different type of business, sounds like a side job, a side hustle. The truth is it's all very turnkeyable. And if you didn't know that, that's why a lot of other people subscribe on my channel because I'm always teaching you how to get in the game of real estate. And there's always the hard way and the easy way. The hard way is always do it yourself. The easy way is always have someone do it for you. And if you subscribe, you're gonna certainly learn a lot more about how that works. I challenge you, in fact, to interview the most successful people that you know. And if they're worth a lot of money, I'll tell you what they all share in common. They all own businesses. Real estate is just one of those businesses that they share most in common with each other because if they make their money in business, they're gonna put it into real estate and yet the majority of them, they actually made their money in the game of real estate. Listen, it's okay if you're feeling worried about your finances because with inflation, with war overseas and how close that's gonna to get to us, no one really knows, but what it does produce is a lot of uncertainty and it gets all of us thinking, you and I thinking, am I doing it the right way or should I be doing it a little different? Is there an enhanced game plan? Is there an elevated approach? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, you should be shifting moving some of your assets around based on some of the things that I've shared today and it can be a little confusing and complicated to know exactly how to do that which is why there's a link below and today what I'm offering is something a little bit different, a free game plan, an opportunity for you to connect with a member of my team and say, hey, give me a review, like give me fresh perspective. What do you see when you look at my finances? This is what I have in a 401k and IRA and here's how I perceive things being affected and how might they be affected long-term. My team, they're not certified financial advisors, but they do have an investor's perspective on alternative investments and different things that we think, that I think you should be interested in looking at. One, just to have a brighter financial future, but to also make sure that you don't commit Warren Buffett's number one sin in times like this, losing money. Right now, doing nothing will likely result in the loss of money, and every investor knows rule number one is don't lose money. So if you wanna make sure you keep yourself safe and protected, but also get a chance to say, wait a second, is there a way for me to look at the situation and protect myself more that actually might make me financially better off? That's what you're gonna find in the link below. It doesn't cost any money, it's just getting a fresh perspective, and if you think that would be useful for you, then click the link, talk to a member of my team and say, hey, if I had a chance to work with Chris, or if Chris were in my shoes, what might he be considering? Let me give that to you today as a gift. To my friends in Ukraine, just know that my heart goes out to you. And as you're defending your freedom, as you're defending your rights, just know that I'm wishing and hoping for the absolute very best outcome. And I hope that these sanctions and everything else we're doing will really make a difference. And for my friends in America that are sitting here thinking, yeah, right, Chris, 2022 is gonna be the end of the real estate market. It is gonna come crashing hard. Is it really true? Is there data that suggests that? There might be. I decided to grab all that I could find and make a video, and I'm gonna tell you what I think is gonna happen in 2022 to the real estate housing market. Zenny, this thing is a guzzler, but I will tell you what, that's not the only effect that we're going to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right direction, that's the right direction. Finish the take. <laughs>